pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. The next item is approval of the minutes from June 19, 2013. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. Are there any uh, errors or omissions or changes? There being none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. The next would be a special meeting for June 27, 2013. Is there a motion to approve? Second. Second by Ryan. That was a special meeting where we just met for uh, I think you were there, Fred. Oh, yeah, I wasn't there, so I should have seen it. Well, then I can't pass the minutes until Carl comes. Uh, so we will wait, because I'm expecting Carl to be here. We'll hold off on that, um, Sharon. Okay. Uh, next is a motion to accept the agenda. So moved. Second. Seconded by Ryan. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Um, I wanted to go over some things that have been um, occurring and happening, so you know what's going on. Uh, Project Graduation sent us a very nice thank you, which I believe I brought a copy with me, and I'll share it later. Um, they were very grateful for the donation that the town gives to them, and they do a really fantastic job now for many, many years to provide a drug-free, alcohol-free time for the high school seniors, of whom we're very proud, uh, and congratulations to them again for graduating. The next uh, I wanted to share with you and maybe have a brief feedback from you. I went to a meeting that the mayor of Middletown invited me to, and at the meeting he had UIC, which is an engineering firm, do a presentation. They were there to present some information about the possibility of lighting the Aragoni Bridge. Now this has been talked about for probably 20 years, a long time. And uh, previously Middletown had gotten a grant and part of the grant they have used for some of the preliminary planning and taking a look at things. They still have a substantial amount of money remaining and they would need an additional substantial amount of money. Uh, one ballpark figure is uh, three and a half million dollars. They have about a little less than a half a million dollars already. And that would be, from the description, quite an elaborate lighting plan. If we were to consider scaling that back, it would certainly be a more modest uh, lighting approach. Evidently, and I have seen some, uh, bridges throughout the world light themselves or that they have lights put on them um, and if you google bridge lighting you see there's a lot of different places uh, San Francisco Oakland um, I think the Newport one of the Newport bridges in that area has has had some lighting I mean, attached Austin to it has one that's Austin. very similar to ours actually with that. do you know how they lit it Ryan? LED yeah um, these would be LED low emi emitting diode bulbs that last for decades so the replacement of the LED is infrequent. Mm -hmm. Is it white or it colored? Can, the one that they had was it could be different colors okay. depending. You yeah. Know. Yeah. That's what they showed us. They showed us this uh, these lights that really weren't terribly bright, but they were uh, capable of creating a lot of different colors, and they are also capable of creating like a wave effect. So you could have a, a very soft lighting where it would just glimmer to a more bright, brighter light that could be changed um, seasonally or based on whatever holiday or We might events. not need fireworks. You might, uh, well, you know, there's some, <laughs> some thoughts to that. In fact, they talked about that uh, in terms of, uh, I asked them if they could set the lights to music because evidently in, in I think in Oakland, they have created, a, it's actually an artist that they engaged and the artist has created this really kind of elaborate lighting display. And to do that, they had donations. So they had people, now obviously this is a big, big city, but they asked for donations for people to buy 
a bulb for a loved one, and then it's sort of named after them. So it, it's an idea that I thought um, is certainly worth uh, exploring and taking a look at. About three years ago, they had, they being Middletown, had permission for a more of a necklace approach to the lighting. The LED lights would be strung around the arches, and it's very uh, compatible with night skies and very compatible with uh, energy usage. They're estimating the energy cost for electricity would be $3,000 a year. That's how little LED lights use in terms of electricity. Middletown also has a potential, again this is all potential, a potential solar array that they may be considered building on top of their old landfill. And because we now have virtual net metering, if you produce electricity, you can offset that amount that you make anywhere within your community or your town if you own those solar arrays. So that would mean the potential of, of some green energy being produced in order to do the lighting uh, using the low emitting diode, the LED lights, which don't require much maintenance, and then the possibility of uh, rather, I'd say an elaborate amount of lighting versus a very modest amount of lighting. So there's no set plan. Um, Mr. Warner, who is the planner for the city of Middletown, is looking at what the potential economic development returns they have seen in other parts of the country. So that's another, certain, certainly another attract, attraction, um, if it can create additional economic development and create a go-to place for people. They talked about putting lights along the sides of the bridge, so you wouldn't see those when you're crossing, but you would see them on Route 9 as you're going under the bridge, and then certainly the lights that go over the arches would be more visible from the boating community as well as the traffic that's underneath on Route and those that travel along the bridge, it would be a much, much uh, less effect, I think, when you're on the bridge itself. But they did bring up night skies, and I know Carl has talked about that, um, talking about this potential bridge lighting project. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to bring it to your attention. I know that there's pluses and minuses. People love the idea, and then I have people that think it's a terrible idea. Um, what do you think? Well, they still need three million. It, it it depends. It depends on what the project is. Yeah. Is that so a little steep? Know. I would think it's yeah. a little steep. Yeah. And I, and actually, because this is a, this has been something that I've been uh, passionate about, and uh, so I, I actually did research on oh, it. Good. And uh, I mean, before this even came yes. about, uh, just to see what other uh, areas had done, and, and as far as cost, that seems steep. I mean, only because I had looked at the bridge that I'm thinking of. Uh, was beautiful, and I thought it was uh, excessive at two million, and they spent that on theirs. It might be smaller though; it only had one pump. I mm -hmm. don't know, um, mm -hmm. but um, but I think that this is. Uh, no, I think that this is uh, phenomenal as far as what this could do to, I mean, when the bridge was built, it was uh, rated the best steel looking steel structure in the country. And uh, it's one I, it's one of our best assets, you know, it's what Portland is known for and Middletown. And I feel like, um, you know, we should work with, uh, with our neighbors in Middletown and it's so great that, uh, you know, Dan, you know, Drew is, you mm -hmm. know, going through and, and actually taking a serious look at this because uh, I don't know this has just been something near you know to me for a while and anything that we can do to uh, make this uh, come you know to fruition would be awesome I think that the uh, you know the business alone you know now we say oh do you know the quarry have you been in the quarry but how cool would it be to say oh do you know the bridge that lights up mm -hmm. and I think that everyone would know in the state and uh, possibly even even more. Uh, no one else is doing this around, so I don't know. I couldn't be more thrilled. So I'm I'm hoping this uh, comes about. Great, Carl. Did you have any comments? No, I think it would be a nice, pretty looking bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think is now is the time 
to do such a, an expenditure on lighting and energy to light up a structure like that. I think it's uh, so maybe something in, in the future. Um, and as far as the LED, as you know, with Night Skies, and I've been doing this for, for six years here yes. on the board, um, or looking at this with the hard lighting, is before it was pretty much unattainable because they couldn't uh, get that kind of wattage with the LEDs. Okay. And, and now with, with technology, um, you know, in 10 years, five years from now, it'll, it'll, everything out there now is going to probably be antiquated mm -hmm. and, you know, if it got to a point where it wasn't very much or if it was uh, something that, uh, that we wouldn't be on uh, the hook for, I, I, would, uh, I would think about it. But right now, again, with all energy, especially energy with, you know, you know where I, I stand with, with street lighting. I mean, so it's pretty hard for me to say, let's go light up a bridge and then in, in the same breath, let's take out three street lights in town. I mean, we had a hard time with that. I just don't, I don't see the balance here. If you want to, you know, and we, with the money and the, and the energy use, um, I like looking at the, the, the proposition and the proposals and see what really works. Well, it's certainly not something that's going to happen immediately. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I think as, as, as time goes, tables. possibly, mm -hmm. you know, with, uh, the new energy sources, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, with, uh, fuel cell come on or, you know, whatever kind of new way of generating like Well, they are talking, Middletown is talking about putting a solar array on top of their landfill, their old landfill, their yeah. abandoned landfill. So yeah. they, they would be able to use the, the solar electricity generated from the panels right, um, exactly. to offset the cost is what their, their thought is. But all of this is a thought. It is not yeah. a definitive matter. But I wanted to get some feedback from you. Yeah. Fred? Yeah, Kathy, you I was just wondering, again, about the money. Like, did, did they invite you just to um, let you know what they were thinking, or did they say, we want Portland to pay half of it? Oh, well, <laughs> they, they are interested in having Portland pay a uh, portion of it, yes. Yep. <laughs> I think it, it would be hard to find the money right now. It is, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it would look great, sure, but sure. it's a lot of money. We'll have to take a look. I mean, it's yeah. going to depend on, you know, what the numbers are. Fred? Yeah, no, I, I, I think everybody thinks well, I mean, conceptually, it's a, you know, it's, a, it's an intriguing idea, and the, the elephant in the room or the elephant on the bridge is a cost. We can't, <laughs> you know, that's, a, you know, we don't have the money, let's face it. So, without grants, without without some kind of private, of the private money, and that's why it's always good to kind of discuss these things. But since it's the, I, you know, I, I too, Bridges, uh, I look at it as you know, it's really is an asset. It's the anniversary is what the sixth of August, seventy-five yes. years, and with the state of the state, uh, that being Connecticut, uh, when uh, we look at our infrastructure, uh, ranked number forty-nine out of fifty states, um, we probably are going to have to have the Portland Bridge or the Aragoni Bridge for another seventy-five. It's going to be there for a long time. And it, it truly is a, a unique structure and, and can be used. I was thinking um, one of the one of the things we might take a look at is in the regular cycle, even uh, the painting cycle. It might be neat to have a slightly different color. Uh, you know, as a start with, a, with with something that wouldn't cost us anything, but since your, your maintenance has to be done anyway. Uh, I know when I go to California and you see the Golden Gate Bridge that glimmers in the sun, you know, it, I could see that, something like that, or a similar color, something that would dress it up and make people a little more proud. Or any other, you know, other ideas about trying to make the bridge more attractive that would be, would be uh, very low cost or no cost. But it's good to talk about it. And, and you're right, you know, I, I've seen too some bridges where they do like them up in it. It's very pleasant to look at, and it, uh, it does generate interest. And so the bringing the topic up is good, but as I say, I think I, I mentioned to Susan on my priority list of one to ten because of the cost. It's probably number ninety-nine. So at the moment, because we just don't. Have well, I will. I will uh, confirm.
continue to go to meetings and I'll, I'll let you know when the next one's coming up so that you can maybe Brian in particular is interested in knowing a little bit more so that we can keep up to date but uh, certainly I, I do recognize there is a cost associated with this thank you um, the next item I wanted to communicate and let you know about is uh, we had our first blight citation hearing this this past week not this week last week and um, it was a property on Main Street that has uh, a large amount of grass, tall grass, excessive amount of grass. And after repeated requests to take care of the grass and cut it, um, the property owner determined that he wanted to come in front of the citation hearing board and explain why he has the grass so high and why he's not cutting it. So the three members were Bill Pollock, uh, Ray Poet, and Peter Castelli. And I must say they did, I thought, an outstanding job in listening very carefully to the uh, person that came in and also gave many, many positive suggestions for how this can be resolved. And there was agreement at the end of the meeting for the property owner to cut the grass by the end of two weeks, which is the 23rd of July. So um, as I said, I thought that the hearing process went very well. And I want to thank also Lincoln Light, who uh, is involved, and also Sergeant Cunningham, who was also involved in trying to uh, resolve this matter. And we'll, we'll see, I'll have another report for you next time. Was that, <coughs> excuse me, was that front and back? Were they going to yes. be cutting front and back? Yes. <coughs> Many other matters that come before us in terms of blight and many, many, uh, a large percentage of our, <coughs> excuse me, our property owners simply take care of it. And we're very happy that when something's brought to their attention, they take care of it and there's, there's no further action necessary. But on occasion, this citation hearing process um, will be used and I think they're hopefully it'll work. Uh, the next item is, and some of you may be aware of this, but I wanted to make sure that the public was aware as well. We have a cooperative project between the Board of Education and the General Town Government, specifically uh, the Technology and Public Works Departments. What we are doing is we are going to be connecting um, underground fi by fiber all of the town buildings with the exception of Gildersleeve School. So that would include Firehouse One, Brownstone Intermediate School, uh, Town Hall, Buck Foreman, Senior Center, Library, and it will also include going down Foley Road and then up High Street in the abandoned water main, which was something Rick Kelsey had suggested and it looks like that will work as the conduit. And that will connect to Valley View School as well as the high school, middle school. And uh, the Board of Education is being required to do this based on <clears throat> the fact that the children will be taking their standardized tests online and also the evaluation of teachers will be done all online. Not to mention the ability for all of the town offices and schools to have very fast internet service. And it will also be our telephone will be replacing it's a our telephone system is over 20 years old Dave and so in the town hall the main system at the town hall so it's a very um, worthwhile project and it's an internal project and it seems to be progressing we hope to have it done before the end of fall before the before the well <laughs> yeah. yeah, last year, last couple of years, we've had snow and Halloween, but that's about, that's about, any questions on that? I have a quick one. Huh? Um, and I do want to commend uh, our staff for, you know, looking at this well, well in advance of, uh, of today. You guys, you know, put this on the table three, four, three, four yeah. years ago to be able to use the water lines as uh, 
you know, a conduit, and, and I think that that's great that, that this is going to come to fruition. I just have a really quick question for you, uh, just my own curiosity. On, on the high street uh, piping, which we're going to be used now for conduit, we used to have all the pipe breaks with the specialist piping. Was that for pressure out, or would, so it's not, you don't think there'd be a lot of, yes, so there would be no crushing, is that going this way, it's going, it was going that way, okay. So you don't foresee, you don't foresee once we run the, uh, that we'd have any more further problems with that, okay. It was in deterioration of the pressure, okay, cool. Good job. Okay, uh, public comment? Uh, next item, old business, appointments to boards and commissions. Do we have anything tonight? None tonight? Okay. Um, the next item is um, chip sealing carousel drive. And we have a memorandum from Rick Kelsey. And Rick has provided to us copies of our townwide road chip seal program. And the program has very successfully and cost effectively maintained our roads using chip seal for over 30 years. This year we will spend approximately $240,000. Um, and here's, a, I don't think I get, do, I, do you yeah, have a copy? Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, to prepare and chip seal approximately 8.3 miles of roads. And as we are aware, the majority of roads in Middlesex County and the state do use chip sealing as a method of maintenance for roads. Other maintenance methods involve milling and installing asphalt pavement. Asphalt pavement is cleaner, smoother, longer lasting, and much more expensive. The following compares maintenance methods and costs for carousel drive. And the residents have requested that we not chip seal their road this year. They're asking for a one year moratorium on the chip sealing for their road. Um, if we were to mill and repave Carousel Drive, which is approximately 0 .30 miles this summer, the approximate cost would be $232,500, and it's likely that the Carousel Drive would need to be repaved in approximately 20 years. If we were to selectively mill, raise catch baits and heads, and install a one and a half inch asphalt overlay, the approximate cost would be forty. $5,000, and it's likely another overly would be needed in approximately 15 years. The cost to chip seal carousel drive this summer will be approximately $7,700, and likely will need to be re-chip sealed in about eight years. Based on the previous information, the approximate cost per year analysis that Rick did to maintain Carousel Drive is the following. Mill and pave, $11,625. Mill and overlay, $3,000. And chip sealing, $960. Um, as you can see, chip sealing is a cost-effective way to maintain our roadways. And I want to thank Rick for giving us also the schedule of the streets that are on for this year and the schedule for the last date that roads have been chip sealed and he provided for us all of the roads in town. I want to thank you for giving that to us, Rick. And uh, Rick will come up in a minute and speak and, and answer any questions you might have. Um, but before he comes up, I just also wanted to show you um, a petition from the residents of Carousel Drive asking that the chip sealing of their road be canceled in fact, one of the residents came in to me today, and I explained to him, and he's aware, because he's a former employee of the Department of Transportation in the state of Connecticut, and he works in um, that same field for a major city. So he's very <coughs> familiar with roads, and he's very familiar with the fact that chip sealing is a more cost-effective method. I told him, we're likely not changing based on the costs. We're not going to be changing our chip sealing program. But he asked us if we would um, not chip seal for one year that particular road. In other words, put it on the cycle for, for another period of time. And they're looking at presenting to you alternatives for other ways of taking care of roads. 
Now, um, I believe we've done a, I think, a fantastic job in terms of maintaining our roads for a very cost-efficient method. Um, I think that our town crew does an outstanding job, and I myself had my road chip sealed not too long ago. And I told Mr. Neshi, who's the gentleman who came in, I said, if the selectmen decide to put you on the schedule for next year as opposed to this year, I want you to do me one favor. I want you to go and look at the roads that have been shimmed and that will be chip sealed this year. And I believe that we do a very good job um, in terms of maintaining our roads, keeping them safe, um, and prevented, preventively maintaining them so that they don't fall apart, which can happen. And that's what's happened with the Brownstone Intermediate School parking lot. That parking lot really um, has to be milled and repaved. And uh, Rick is also going to be having the men chip seal our parking lot at the town hall and the garage. Is that right? Oh, excuse me, the transfer station on Friday. So you won't be allowed to park in there in case you have business in, the, in those two facilities. Not the transfer station. The town hall Friday, transfer station. Okay, will Monday, will still Wednesday. Be open at the, town hall? the town hall will still be open. We just ask that you park on the street. <laughs> Thank you. You can go on the sidewalk, not on the parking lot. Um, anyway, um, this is the um, residents of Carousel Drive urge uh, Portland to stop the scheduled chip sealing of our road, and they prefer that the road, this type of road maintenance, not be applied in their neighborhood. They have many reasons, including children's safety, decreased property values, and damage to their automobiles. So you can see the names of the families that signed. And he assured me that this is more than half of the residents that own property on Carousel Drive. Rick, do you want to comment on the? Um, Yep. I will, while you're going up, I'll say one, I'll tell you the n property, not the numbers of people, but rather the property owners, because there's two property owners for some of these one properties. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, a dozen. And I believe he told me there are 19 homes on this 0.3 mile road. Thank you. Rick? Yeah, uh, just a couple things. With all due respect, to Mr. Nessie indicates uh, uh, this is a poor choice of road maintenance. I take strong exception to that. And then that we need to change our 1950s mentality and begin milling and paving its roads like our neighbors, which I take exception to, obviously. And Mr. Nessie is, is a traffic single employee for the DOT, not, nothing to do with roads and pavement. So just to clarify some things. Um, but I guess everything else I kind of tried to succinctly put into uh, this one-page memo, and I think you talked about it when you talked about lighting the bridge, and it's about cost. And um, whether it's these times or any other times, I mean, I applaud your predecessors, my predecessors, um, for trying to do cost-effective things to our infrastructure, not only roads and pavement. But I mean, this town, um, long before me, um, we're in a somewhat, not somewhat unique, but not terribly. We're, we fortunately don't have heavy traffic counts. Uh, we don't have a lot of traffic, you know, a lot of traffic, and that allows us to do something such as Chip Seal, where Cromwell, maybe Middletown, don't. Um, because of just the, the, the amount of traffic that uh, doesn't allow the chip seal to last. Um, basically, uh, I believe, and I did a little call it around, the only town that I'm aware of right now that does not chip seal is Cromwell. But Cromwell has a little bit more money coming in to do their infrastructure. What Cromwell does is uh, they mill and pave. And if you read over there, you'll see they're bonding all the time for doing their roads, and, and that's, that's fine. Middletown, actually, of interest, um, uh, are, is beginning to chip seal again this year because of cost. And Middletown actually gave me the numbers I had. It's, it's basically uh, a road uh, such as Carousel Drive, exactly uh, $150 per lineal foot is what that costs. Um, you know, 
very expensive. Uh, we couldn't begin to even think about doing anything other than chip selling right now. I mean, like I say, my total budget for road materials, my total budget is $310,000 this year, of which I need, I'm, I'm pushing it to do 240000 because I've got drainage work, I've got a lot of other work that I have to do, and I'm kind of a little nervous and I'm not going to leave enough on the, on the table. So, I mean, if you looked at doing Carousel Drive, you'd use up your whole budget for road maintenance. Secondly, you know, to try to make a transition such as what anything other than uh, would require, um, it would be quite hard to do without putting forward a lot of money up front because you've got to transition all these roads. We're, we're, this is the first year since we had the stimulus money that I've been able to do eight miles a road. I mean, typically with what the monies we have, because we don't get much town aid road, town aid road doubled, this is a godsend. I mean, if you begin to even think about doing anything such as milling and overlaying or um, milling and paving, I mean, you might just as well take the highway budget and quadruple it. And I just really don't see you doing that. And like I say, I applaud uh, you, the board, and, 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 the, and the folks before us, and the residents, because they have to tolerate it. I mean, you know, it's, a, it's really chip sealing, basically, if you go out and carousel abuts Sage Hollow Road. If you go out there right now, you couldn't tell me which road is chip sealed and which road is paved. So basically the chip seal process is, we go along, we spray oil, we put the stone down, immediately you can drive on it, we sign it so it's 15 miles, we sweep all the stone off in three weeks, and it's coarse. Two months later, it's worked its way in, and you got a nice surface. And I mean, it's, it's no different than when you seal your driveway but this has a 3 8 stone in it, so it's an armor coat. It's, a, it's an excellent method of, of maintaining your roads, and most towns do it, and most towns have done it. Most of your roads are a glorified chip seal. It's called penetration mechanic, and when they were constructed, it's a three-course stone process. So, um, Like I say, I take great exception to saying it's a poor choice of maintenance, and I take strong exception to the 50s mentality. Well, maybe I don't. Maybe the 50s mentality was a good thing. So. Um, I strongly recommend that we continue to chip seal. I strongly recommend that you do not not have me chip seal that road this year. It is a perfect candidate for chip sealing. It's its time. We crack sealed it. If you let it go another year, it's going to deteriorate in another year, and you're still going to be having the same process because these are the processes to maintain roads, and that's about all there is. There's micro paving, which is a kind of a special thing. There aren't many other processes, so um, I think you, the board. Um, you know, see the success we've had, and I, and I strongly recommend that we continue with this program, uh, and we, and it's a good program. So I don't know if you have any questions. This part, as the milling and paving, it's not, you wouldn't have the equipment to do that Oh, this either. once you go to milling, That's one of the reasons, thing. one of the reasons we, we are able to keep our costs down, we're unique somewhat. We, uh, not like other towns, we actually haul our stone, we actually participate, we're, we, provide the stone to the chipper. We wash our stone. Most towns don't. I mean, no. If you go to this other process, you contract everything out. Mm -hmm. you, you might yes. get them in and contract it out. It's, uh, it's just, uh, you know, I just don't. Uh, and I, I don't want you to think that this road is in terrible condition, because it isn't. Carousel Road Drive it's cracked. It's got a lot of crack in terrible it. condition. It was sealed last year, and the town has done a good job in keeping the road maintained. I, I want to point that out, because I did go on the road and saw that it is not in horrible shape. It is in good, um, good shape. It is Tom? a perfect candidate. It is, along with Fox Run, which is on here, they're 90, 1996 <coughs> roads. A good example was uh, just how long an overlay lasts, for example. Uh, when we did the sewer project down on uh, Marlboro Street sewer project, we did Tachito and those roads. And I made the uh, decision to overlay those roads with an inch and a half over it, and they have lasted very well from 1999 to present. So that's 14 years. We're doing those roads again. What you want to do is you want to catch these roads just like you do to drive. When you start seeing it crack, you catch it. You don't wait and let it crack further. That's why we're successful, because we, we, we're diligent about doing That's why this inventory sheet you have, which I prepared back in 96, I mean, we use it all the time. It's very easy to use. You can go back, you can see when they were last chip sealed, you can determine everything, and we, we follow it very carefully.
and uh, that's why we're pretty successful. So, Carl, you had a question. I'm sorry. Yeah, on, uh, there are two. One, so it's alligated a little bit right now. Yeah. And yes. Yeah, so basically, this is the thing to do is so the water doesn't penetrate, freeze, crack. And it's it's the perfect it's candidate for for, gypsy. for this treatment. Couldn't get any better. Um, if we, if we, uh, another thing is on the petition, they don't ask to be one year in a petition. They just don't want to do it according to the Not in a petition, but he did come in to yeah, see Yeah, but I'm saying today. on the petition. And right I told now. him we're not likely, right. it's not likely that we're going to change this no. maintenance program. And he said to me, would you consider waiting until next year yeah. to, to and if we didn't do it this year, would that have a, a, a bad adverse effect upon the, on the road we have now? It, it, really it won't have a horrible effect, but I mean, I guess my question, my, why? My, why? Yeah. Why? Why would you do that? They I took mean, the time to say, I mean, I agree with you. Where are, you know, you and know, unfortunately, one no at one, a time. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I, I absolutely agree. I mean, the only thing is I can kind of empathize with them because, you know, they, they when they bought their house, it, it was paved. And so they didn't. So in a sense, now we're telling them, okay, we're, you're going to get chip seal, and so they're not essentially getting what they paid for when I can, they bought I the house. I can tell you another um, example. I went to uh, one of our 55 and older communities. Um, they had requested that um, their community decide if they were going to ask to have one of their major roads turned over to the town. Uh, which is a legitimate request that anyone in the town can make and we've had some people come to us um, so I said I would go to their association meeting which I did um, and they asked me about the road and they said they have a particular style of uh, guardrail they have a particular style of other accoutrements as well as the fact that it's all privately owned and if the town were to take it over, there's road regulations that require us to take rights of way. And also, um, the care and upkeep of the road would be the same as every other road in the town. And interestingly enough, they overwhelmingly voted to not ask to have their road taken over by the town. Why not? Because, because and I, I believe, because they thought that what they bought was a private road, and what they bought they like. It's a beautiful um, neighborhood. It's something that, you know, it's the American way. You're free to buy where you want to buy. And um, they d have done so, and they love living in Portland, and they love the way it's set up. So to your point, these are public roads that oh, have no, been and accepted. I understand. Oh, no, and I'm, I'm just making the point that I can see their frustration. I not understand. not that you know I, I agree with not you know chip sealing I, I still think it's you know you know we're not made of money and obviously it's the most cost effective I will I will disagree though you can tell a difference and I'll you tell you can what by walking I'll tell you what <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what you go, go you go out there tonight because I've done it you go by that and take a look at the intersection of Sage Hollow Road and Carousel Drive and I'll be darned if you if you're that good to tell the difference and we chip seal Sage Hollow Road probably three years ago. Okay. You'd be hard pressed. I'll give it, I'll You'd give be hard pressed. Take pass. your shoes off. Take your <laughs> shoes off and give her a go. But uh, again, it's it's uh, you know it, it's it's kind of it, it ain't broken. I'm not sure as you really want to get fixed it. Particularly again, it's about money. If we were flush, I guess maybe I still wouldn't change my mind. But I, I didn't finish up before. Oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to. And, and I think I read very recently that the state is going to be chip sealing seven. And 66? I'm not no. sure as they're going to do that. They're going to did be milling and repaving. Yeah. They did chip they're seal. They're milling the 20th, uh, the 19th. They're milling, the they're milling Friday. They don't, they don't do that. They're Saturday. milling Friday. They're and then they're paving. No, they're okay, paving. My mistake. That's an overlay. And that from, is. Just so people know, from uh, Portland Cobalt, right. Portland East Hampton line to Dairy Queen. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, the actual paving, I believe, Rick and I went to their meeting, will start 20. Six, whatever that Monday is. No, well, yeah, 29th maybe the 20, Yeah, maybe a little later. The last week. They're starting Friday. 29th. But the 19th. Anyways, sorry. The 19th, they'll be milling. They're milling uh, Route okay. 9, and they have been repaving Route 9. Typically, the state highways are remilled. No, not milled and paved. Milled and paved, excuse me. I don't know. What's your pleasure? The, 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 the families did take the time to send this in. Um, I'm very 
clearly explained to the gentleman that came in that um, we're likely staying with this method of maintenance, but I would certainly um, agree the selectmen want to wait a year for that particular road, um, but there's no guarantee that it won't be chip sealed next year. I mean, there's, there's just, it's up to you. It's not something that I felt I could make the decision on because this is a town decision and you make the decisions associated with spending and maintenance. And as Rick has pointed out, um, this is the method by which we have been and will continue to maintain our roads. What would the, if it was extended a year, I was just trying to think what the, what the advantages are. There'd be, there might be an expectation by those folks that change. And in reality, because of the cost, they're probably I doubt that there'll be a change. So that, that, on the other hand, it does provide an educational opportunity. Now we, I think if most of the, most folks in town saw chip seal stay as is versus, um, you know, this is the cost versus going the other way and raising the mill rate, Stay with the chips here. So I mean, I think the educational process absolutely will, will certainly uh, absolutely. prevail. But, you know. And I guess it's a little bit of um, if, if people um, feel that their road, they want us to wait a year. Um, I, I told him I'm not guaranteeing you that this won't be chip sealed the next year, but I want you to understand, like you just said, what the cost is. And also, I want you to go and look at the roads that have been chip sealed um, and, and recognize that your road's not being properly maintained. You may change your mind the next time around. If we go ahead and chip seal it um, in the next couple of weeks, I think the natural reaction, and I'm just speaking for myself, would be I would get very angry that you didn't listen to me and give me an opportunity to talk to you and so forth. So thank you. I guess I'm, in, I'm inclined to, to wait a year, but with no expectation that there's going to be any change, because I happen to think it's a good method. I'd, I'd be up for that. I don't know what the rest of you think. Uh, I think we could, but Rick is right. When it starts deteriorating, then it does go bad on your real fast, and I have a driveway like that, so I know. But um, I would want them to see, this doesn't mean we're going to change things year because no, we're not clearly going to change it we don't have another option and then just replace it with another road rick and uh but it's we're not going to do drive, anything please. different we'll do um <laughs> grace lane <laughs> <laughs> actually i can think of some roads that i would really love, love to see done but the dollars the dollars are, are there we're starting tomorrow you do have a plan with this. It's not like haphazardly it's, done. It's, I understand that. It's fine. It's just, it's not, you know, the only thing I, I, I think it sends a message that, uh, right. No, but I, whatever, I see your point. I would make it clear. Uh, that I think I, I know I know exactly what you're saying. The, the only thing is, I, I think that it's important that we, you know, this board takes into consideration the views of the people who we do represent, you know. And uh, when you have over half of a street that signs a petition, I mean, I, I think we owe them that much uh, to let them have a year, you know. And and uh, you know, I, I wish that I wish uh, a few of them could have been here tonight, though, you know, to to make their Tom case. Had a, he had to go to a golf oh. Oh. Well, but they, they know, just need to matters. know we're not going to change mm -hmm. next year. Mm -hmm. There's nothing. Yeah. We don't really have any other. Exactly. Yeah, and and I, I just I don't see a harm in a year. I, you know, it's we'll just I, you know I, you know it's a minor inconvenience, but in the end, it's it's uh, it's just it's you know the will of the people. Well, I, and I think that um, it, as Fred, I agree with with many things. Everyone actually, in what you've said tonight, but I think most important is that we all have to understand that there's a cost associated with the maintenance of our roads. There's timeliness, and there's also, um, 
you know, consideration of what it is we're doing. And we are revisiting this. And this is not the first time that we've talked about how we maintain our roads. We've talked about this many times. And this is just one more time that we're talking about it. And I think that uh, we need to restate that this is the method of maintenance. And if this particular community is um, asking for one year, um, it's something for the something to consider. But certainly the following year, they most likely will be chip sealed, unless something very drastic changes, and I don't anticipate that. Just a quick, quick question for sure. Rick. Has there ever been a reverse on a, 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 town, a town road taken over by, uh, is there a process, or has that ever happened where folks can take over a town sure. road and maintain it and pay for it? I'm not aware of it. Well, I can only hope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, I, believe, I believe you'll find that it's in the charter. Sure. Um, so they could take it. So if, if yes. they were inclined to, to do that, Definitely. they could pay for it themselves. So that's something. I kind of like that idea. Well, um, it, within the charter, it is this board, the Board of Selectmen, have the power to accept roads and to um, discontinue abandoned roads. That's what they have. They have the ability to do that. Okay. Um, so that's an option for them, actually. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, there's. There's, that exists, and I, as I said, it, it's um, it's certainly an education opportunity, an educational opportunity. So, is there a motion that someone would I'll, like to make? I'll motion to uh, wait one year before chip sealing. Carousel drive. Carousel drive. Do you want to add anything oh. to that motion? Um, with the understanding that we will be chip sealing in one year time. Okay. Is there a second to that? Second. I have a. Question, well, question, question. Go ahead. Beforehand, I, I think the caveat is: is it the money's there next year? We don't know. You know, are we, where are we yes. going to be putting this? And they is have that a to, friendly they, amendment. A friendly amendment. They have to understand that. Also, real Did you get quick. That? Sharon, if you wanted to add it to the part about the chip sealing in one year, I provided well, funds. The provided oh, funds are available. available. Are we going to keep them to the, to the beginning of the list that way? You know how you're, you're right now you're working? I think it's the board's. Uh, you, you know what I'm I saying? I think we'll keep them at the beginning of the list. Well, we don't normally make up the list, though. I mean, no, no, right no I mean, this is his, it's his, it's his, his list. Job. Yeah. Rick's, that's it's what I'm saying. Rick's convenient convenient right. for Rick, I think. The other right. thing is, I want, I want them to understand there's 50% of people who are, don't want, they haven't signed the petition also. And the idea is. This is a town road, and this is the maintenance that we're doing on the town roads to extend the life. And, and you can see the, the the vast difference between a chip seal and extending the lives of our roads for a long time and keeping a nice road, you know, for a long period of time, or to let it go to to the point where it has to be milled and grind because of huge potholes and you know, like some like Cromwell's always bonding, like we've talked about. Right. Or they have the ability, like you say, to take it. And you want to be a private road and do whatever you want to do. I'm on a private road. I would love, if you want to use your chip seal, I got a spot <laughs> for you. You know, because I'm, when it comes to private, it's so yes. expensive. It is. It's, it, it's. I think we use this as a real learning time tool. and that we talk about this and uh, um, revisit the matter. Uh, because road maintenance, and Rick has been telling us for many, many years, as long as I've been on this board, make sure that you allocate enough money to maintain your roads. Because if you don't, you're going to lose them, and you have to keep your roads up. And many of our roads are probably going to need some major work. And um, Rick has been telling us that as the director for a long time. And uh, this year, we are fortunate to have $240,000 in town aid road money, which uh, is very helpful to the town. There's no guarantee we will have that again next year as a state grant. So the money that we don't use on it, say we do this, and we, we uh, do not chip seal the road, what do we do with that extra money? Do you have other roads? Stays in town aid road. You go back into Stays town. Stays in town aid road. I'll use it to prep the roads back to you. Okay, you can, yeah, that you can hold that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next item is refund of excess payments. I move.
move to okay. refund to Leo F. Carabetta. Thank you, Rick. Thirty dollars and fifty cents. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ryan. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I move we refund to B W Credit Leasing Limited. Uh, there's three amounts: three hundred thirty-eight dollars and ninety-five cents, two hundred forty-eight dollars and fifteen cents, and two hundred twenty-five dollars and eighty cents. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Carl. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. I move we refund to Nissan Infinity LT $139.88 and $469.54. Is there a second? Second. Second by Carl. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. I move we refund to Gary Colby doing business as Colby. I guess that's what it says. Okay. Uh, $41.26. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Carl. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All passes. <laughs> I move we refund to Lisa M. Piotti, $6.66. Is there a second? Second. Seconded Second. by Fred. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. I move we refund to Jennifer Lindbergh, $12.08. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Fred. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Status and committee reports. I did uh, speak with Rick, Carl, um, and Ryan um, in regard to the requests of, on the water and sewer information. And he said most of that information he can easily get. There's a few things that might take a little time. He'll give it to me, and then I'll pass it on to our committee. Please. That's looking at the water and sewer matter. So I'll get that to you as soon as I receive it. Thank you. Um, I already reported on the blight citation hearing and um, don't think we have anything else in terms of reports tonight. Public comment? A Board of Selectmen general informal discussion. Are there any items or questions? I have nothing as of tonight on the follow-up items. And so I would ask that there be a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of land acquisition. And we have uh, Dave Kosminski as a guest in executive session with us. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Carl and Kathy, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So we'll take a brief break at, at 